Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we shall look in more detail at job costing, how it can be recorded, and what happens when overheads are under-applied or over-applied. Job costing ties the cost of producing a particular good or service to the requirements of the customer, and it is typical of a business where the customer has specific requirements for the order, or where a limited number of goods are produced. Job costing is typical of businesses such as building firms, aircraft companies, and printers who produce batches for for customers. Job costing should be distinguished from process costing, where all items produced are identical, and so costs can be determined as unit costs. Unit costs are obtained by dividing the total production cost by the number of units produced. Job costing means that costs must be assigned to a job. These costs are usually split into three categories. Direct materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead. Together these make up the product costs. To carry out job costing, a business must have a way of recording and assigning costs to a job. Much of the accounting software in use today has modules which assist in this process, particularly in terms of tracking labour hours. Costs will flow through the work accounts as each job is completed. As work is in progress, it accumulates materials costs, labour costs and manufacturing overhead until it reaches the stage of being a finished good. At this point, all costs have been applied, but the product has not been sold. Upon sale, the costs are transferred or applied to the cost of goods sold. Each job will have associated with it a job costing sheet that will record costs of materials, labour and overhead. The sheet may be kept manually or it may be a part of a computer program. Clearly, the large jobs, such as the production of a private jet, the use of accounting software has made this tracking much easier. Let us work through a typical example for a construction company making sheds and summer houses to order. Once an order has been placed, the job costing process will begin. Internal requisition sheets and time sheets will assist, and the company has decided to apply manufacturing overhead on the basis of direct labour hours worked on the job. The overhead rate has been determined as $30. To make recording simpler, the company has decided that many small items of materials will not be recorded for each job, but will be treated as part of manufacturing overhead. A requisition slip is authorised by a supervisor before raw materials can be drawn from stores. The requisition slip will show the job number or reference, the materials required, date of supplying the materials and the cost of the materials. In addition to the information being recorded on the job sheet, the supply of raw materials will produce an entry to the accounts. The journal entry has been shown here. The inventory account for work in progress is debited with $1,750 and the inventory account for raw materials has been credited with $1,750. The asset of work in progress has increased and the asset of raw materials has decreased. To record direct labour, a time card is used. Employees will record the time spent on each job separately, so that the time card detail, when entered to accounting software, will allocate the cost to the job. The card shows the employee name, the rate of pay, the job number, hours worked, and the total to be charged to the job. The journal entry shows how the information is then entered to the accounts. Work in progress has been debited with $120 since the asset of work in progress has increased. The liability of wages payable has been credited with $120 since this liability has increased. The last part to be recorded is the manufacturing overhead. Any business that carries out job costing will need to determine the allocation base, in other words, what will determine the allocation. 
For most businesses, the choice is between using direct labour hours or using machine hours. A construction company will favour direct labour hours. Paradise Construction has arrived at the figure of $30 per hour because the estimated overheads for the year are $750,000 and the estimated direct labour hours are 25000 Dividing overhead by hours, we get the figure of $30. The journal entry for the accounts will reflect this overhead for the work done so far. Eight hours of overhead costs are to be applied at $30 per hour a total of $240. The asset account of work in progress is being increased and the manufacturing overhead account is decreased. At this point the job costing sheet will now have entries relating to direct materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead. Materials costs are $1,750, labour costs are $120 and manufacturing overhead of $240 has been applied. We have seen that applying manufacturing overhead will produce a credit to the manufacturing overhead account. Where does the overhead come from? What are the entries that debit the account? The entries that debit the account come from all the activities that make up manufacturing overhead, such as depreciation, utility costs, administrative costs and any other costs. Remember that since the rate of applying overhead for costs is determined before the job commences, it is based upon estimates of costs. Actual costs may be different during a period, and then an adjustment might be necessary. There are three possibilities. The first is that actual and applied overhead are equal and so no adjustment is needed. More typically, an adjustment is needed so that the account will balance and can be closed at the end of the year. If actual costs of overhead exceed the amount that is applied, then we need to apply more overhead. If the actual overhead was less than the amount applied, we still need to adjust the account. The question we must answer is, how is the adjustment to be made? Consider the case where actual is greater than applied and there is a requirement to apply more overhead. If we were being meticulous, we could say that this adjustment needs to be made for every job that has been completed or is still in progress. Managerial accounting does not normally treat the adjustment in this way. If the difference is small, then the adjustment is made by increasing the account of cost of goods sold. Manufacturing overhead will need a small credit to balance the account, and the cost of goods sold is debited by the same amount. If the amount applied is greater than the actual manufacturing overhead incurred, then the adjustment involves a debit to manufacturing overhead and a credit to cost of goods sold. Suppose that the amount we need to adjust is not a small amount. What are the procedures? The usual procedure will be to share or apportion the adjustment between the accounts that are involved. Manufacturing overhead flows through the work in progress account, finished goods account and cost of goods sold so the amount should be shared between these accounts. The sharing is determined by taking the balances in the accounts and calculating a figure to use for sharing. In the example we have an adjustment of $6,000 to be apportioned to work in progress that has a balance of $40,000, finished goods that has a balance of $10,000 and cost of goods sold which has a balance of $50,000. We divide the adjustment figure by the total of the balances and determine that for each dollar in the accounts we shall apply additional overhead adjustment of 60 cents to the dollar. Work in progress receives $2,400, finished goods $600 and cost of goods sold $3,000. The journal entry now shows the adjustment. Debits to work in progress to finished goods and cost of goods sold and a credit to manufacturing overhead. How would a service industry apply job costing? In the case of a hospital, then each patient would be considered as a job. Medicines and use of machines, say for a scan, are direct costs, as is the direct labour of nurses and doctors, with a further markup being applied to cover overhead. An automobile repair shop would operate in a similar way, with direct materials and labour being recorded. 
but the labour hours recorded on your invoice will include the markup to cover overhead and profit. This ends the third podcast for managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.